You're listening to the Hello Well with Danielle show, a podcast taking women of color on a journey exploring all things wellness and travel related. We're all about showing you how to put on your oxygen mask first and creating lasting self-care habits that will free you to travel the world and live the life you truly desire and not one you have to fake loving. I'm your host, Danielle Washington. Now let's buckle up and start this journey. Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for joining. Um, Again, welcome to another episode of the Hello Well with Danielle podcast. First off, I just need to give a shout out to all of you amazing Hello Well sis. That's what y'all are calling. I'm calling y'all. This is the tribe um, who have just come and poured in and just gave comments, left reviews, left ratings, saying like the podcasts have been resonating with them and that they love it, that it was a refreshing take on, you know, a woman of color. And so I'm just grateful for all of y'all for leaving those notes, sending me a DM, writing it on social media. So I just want to say thank you. And if you're new, welcome. Thank you for joining us. And if you're coming back, thanks for coming back. I'm loving y'all. Y'all are y'all are my tribe. Um today I just I wanted to do this episode to say that let's be real, I am so hella not okay. In the recent days, um the Brianna Taylor ruling came out saying that None of those officers were guilty of murdering her because, yes, she was murdered. And what just pissed me off and so many other of us that, you know, even the neighbor got a charge. You know, they were, you know, there was a charge, you know, if one of them were one of the three were charged for endangering the neighbors, um, which sucks. Like her death, her murder was not a factor, but a bullet or something going towards a neighbor's house was, was worthy of a charge. And I'm just not okay. And this is one of those times when I feel like we so need self-care, especially, you know, we always say we're busy, 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 and we don't have time for it. But when you have moments like this, it's like the universe is saying, sis, take the time. I just feel like we're living in this grand hogs day of a horror movie You know, there's murder after murder, after police brutality, after, you know, all these different things that we go through. And even if it's not even like at that level, you know, as women of color, we're constantly having to fight harder for positions and being our voice heard. And we have to, you know, do so many different things. And there's other struggles that come on as being a woman of color. And it's just like, Every day, it just feels like there's a new thing or every week or every month. And, you know, these larger issues like the Breonna Taylor situation just reminds us that it's not just us that it's going through all these different things. It's just it's a global level. And, you know, Malcolm X said it best. The most disrespected and unprotected person in America is the black woman. Yet as black women or women of color, we are disrespected. We are unprotected. It is the time now more than ever to take care of ourselves and to add, to pour into ourselves and take care of ourselves and add self-care. But we're over here saying, nah, I really know I need it, but I'm just too busy. I got all these things I need to do. I got to take care of the kids. I got to make dinner. I, you know, I got to work, you know, you know, we're in quarantine or whatever. And, you know, now I'm like a like quasi parent, all these, I mean, this teacher, like I have all these things and I can't take care of myself. Again, the universe is saying now is the time. There's a song. I don't even know where I found it, but there's a song by a guy named Kenneth Whalum and it's called might not be okay. And so I just love the topics, the, the, like the lyrics of the song because it just resonated so much with me. And it was, and I'm just going to read it because you know me, I don't sing very well. <laughs> Black folk be dying and they gonna keep dying. Police been firing and they gonna keep firing. The government been lying and they gonna keep lying. Another civilian, another not guilty, another t-shirt, another rap lyric, another life gone. You, you think about like 
I don't know if you're like me, but I, I look at these t-shirts with everyone's name on it. You know, Trayvon Martin, you know, there's so many different names. I don't even want to start naming them because I always hope that the last name that we hear or the name that we just recent name we heard is the last one. I just like, I just pray like when I hear something like the situation with Breonna Taylor, like let this be like, oh, this was the, this is the camel that broke the straw. I understand that reality is that it probably isn't, but it's like, it's my hope. It's my hope. And it, again, it goes back to why we need to take care of ourselves. You know, Audre Lloyd said it best, you know, caring for myself is not self-indulgence. It's self-preservation. And that is an act of political warfare. So let's start off with, you know, what, what self-care isn't. Because I think that may play into why as busy women of color, we often say we don't have time for self-care. So, you know, self-care is not selfish. Being self, being, taking care of yourself is not selfish. Putting yourself first is not selfish. It's, you know, we talk about being able to pour in everyone. We want to do things for everyone else. How can you pour into someone if you are empty? How, how can you be there and be responsible if you have nothing? Being able to take care of yourself and pour into yourself allows you to be there for other people. So it is not selfish. It also doesn't mean that you're weak or you're less. You know, we come from this, I got to be the strong woman, you know, persona that there's so much pride in that. And in that pride, it's like, okay, being a strong woman means that I need to struggle. Like, how can I be the strong woman if I can't show that I have struggled? And self-care doesn't allow me to struggle. It allows me to take care of myself. It allows me to love on myself. It allows me to have compassion for myself. It allows me to take the time to say, sis, I am not okay and I need help. But if we keep this, you know, this, this mentality that we, you know, it means that we're weak, that we're less than, then yeah, no, we're not going to take care of ourselves. So self-care is not a, does not mean that you're weak. It does not mean that you're less than. Heck, Taking care of yourself shows that you are a strong woman. It shows that you know that this is something that you need. So there's so many ways to, to, you know, add in self-care as a busy woman of color. And so this is part one because reality check, there's several different things. And I want to make sure that I'm giving you guys several different options that you can utilize so that when we have times like this, when we aren't okay, when we hear, and I'm just, I'm upset. I'm, I'm just, I'm furious. I want to scream. I want to yell. I want to break things. I mean, I don't want to riot because me as a person, I feel like I still want to be mindful and I'm trying to be mindful and know that, you know, the universe brings us these things for a reason. And, you know, there's other ways I can go about doing, but I'm angry. But I'm just, I'm angry. And so being able to have ways where you can, even in your busy life, pour into yourself and take care of yourself. You know, if you have just a couple of few things, it will make a difference because, you know, you just got to start somewhere. It starts with just starting somewhere. So the first thing I wanted to talk about in, you know, how ways that busy women can add self-care into their lives with ease. Um, And the first one is like my favorite and it's shifting your priority list and bumping you up on that list. One thing I always like to ask people is, especially women, is if you had a list of priorities and all of us probably do already have a list. And look at your list. Think about the list. If you have one already, either look at it or think about it right now and ask yourself or let you think to yourself, where am I on this list? Am I number one on this list? Am I number two on this list? Am I number 23, number 44, number 102 on the list? Or do you even make the list? Oftentimes we have this list of all these things we care about that are priorities to us, that are important to us, that are number one things that are in our lives. And we don't make the list. If that's you, 
Start by just putting yourself on the list. That's a form of self-care right there. And if you are on the list, bump yourself up on that priority list. There's nothing wrong with putting self first. Putting self first still can mean that I'm still taking care of other people, but I'm choosing because it, it adds to my personal value, my it adds to my personal being and adds to my joy to help other people. But it's that you're choosing, not that it's a responsibility and I have to do it. It's that you are choosing that this is this brings me joy. It brings me joy to take care of my aunt. It brings me joy to, you know, volunteer at my school's, you know, my, my kid's school, you know. So again, being able to shift your priorities and add yourself up on that list is a huge difference. Next on that list is being able to start with the basics. Um, and I'm talking like hardcore, literal basics like sleep, like water healthy eating and just pleasure. Like we often just need a little bit of rest. Taking an extra hour or 30 minutes in your day in the either, you know, giving yourself an extra hour to sleep in or going to bed extra extra hour or 30 minutes or whatever it is can make a difference in your body. I can tell you from my own issues with sleep, Mine isn't necessarily sleep because even though, and this is my, one of my well less confessions, if you follow us, follow me on Instagram on hello well with Danielle, you know that every Wednesday I do a well, a, excuse me, a well less L E S S confession. And so one of my well less confessions and goes along with, you know, having this, you know, basic form of self care is I have sleep apnea and with sleep apnea, in theory, my body is sleeping or I am sleeping or I think I'm sleeping. But what I do is I stop breathing in the middle of the night. So I'm not getting like the REM sleep that you really need. And so while I think that I am sleeping, I'm really not. And my body is not resting. So if with when, when I don't wear my machine, I am not allowing my body to get the rest that it needs. So you may not have sleep apnea, but again, it goes to that whole mentality of not allowing your body to get the rest that it needs. It affects your mentality. It affects your mood. It affects your health. It affects your blood pressure. There's so many things that go into why sleep is so important. Same thing with water. We need water. I know it sounds so silly, like we need water, but water is so vital to just our well-being and making sure that first thing you do in the morning and you roll over, it's not grab the phone. It's grab that bottle of water and pour into yourself so you're hydrated and pouring into yourself throughout the day. Water makes, there's so many great benefits behind drinking water. And of course, eating healthy. So just, you know, again, it's the small things. You don't have to move a mountain to add self-care. It's the small little things that add into the bigger result of you feeling better and you taking care of you. Uh, Another one I like to talk about is scheduling, you know, a meeting with yourself, you know, making yourself, you know, we talked about making yourself a priority. Talking about scheduling in a meeting with yourself, put put an appointment on your calendar. Think of it is as if you were scheduling a meeting with, I don't know, Michelle Obama, Oprah, you're not going to miss that meeting. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't be missing that meeting. So if that is something important, you're going to make sure you make that meeting. You're going to make sure that you, you know, tell the people around you, no, these times are are, are blocked. These times are deal breakers because these are blocked up because I have a very important meeting. And the very important meeting is a meeting with you. You are that meeting. Now, when you treat it as a very important meeting a VI, with a VIP or whoever that is to you, which it is you in this scenario, you're not going to miss that. And you can do whatever you choose in that. But I encourage you to do something that pours into you, brings you joy. It can be you sitting in your closet doing not a single thing. It could be you 
taking a, have an appointment to talk to your good girlfriends and get a good laugh. It could be you Netflix and watching whatever it is, mindless TV shows and having fun. It could be just sitting in a bathtub. It could be just sitting. It's whatever you want it to be. But when you schedule that time and you make it a priority to say this time is blocked and it is not changing and it is a deal breaker to add to change it. You're telling yourself and you're making it a habit, a pattern that says these times are my time and they are non-negotiable, non-negotiable. Another thing I love doing is adding a or creating a mood booster list. Um, Again, it's like the small things that you can do within 10 minutes that will shift your mood. So like I have a playlist. I have, and maybe I should, well, should I? Okay, I'm going to share my playlist. Don't judge my music, but I have a playlist of songs that I use to boost my mood. Um, There's songs I listen to a lot of the mornings that kind of get me going. Um, And then there's songs that I have that are just to like, get me out of a funk. So one of my favorite songs, and it's funny, I should know who sings a song, but I kind of don't. But there's a song when I'm in a funk, especially when working people and someone's got on my last nerves. And I'm like, the song I listen to is I don't, you have a million things I'd rather do than to be with you. And like, I know that is not normally what would be deemed as a mood booster song, but it boosts my mood. It, you know, I love the beat. I love the words. And it's so I'm reminded to myself like, yo, I can choose to mess with you or not. And right now I'm choosing that you are someone I am not messing with today. And so it is my mood booster. So having music, music is such a great way to change your mood, but having music as a way to change your mood is a life changer, at least in my world. I love music. Music is, I would say music is my first love. Dancing is my mistress. I wish I could sing. I could just dance. I can't sing. Um, So having a playlist, you know, get out to another way of things to think about for a mood booster list is getting out in nature and going for a quick walk. Getting out in nature, there's something about being outside, even if you aren't in like walking, touch the ground with your bare feet. You know, there's this thing and it might be a little bit woo woo because you probably hear a little woo stuff here on this podcast, but like taking off your shoes and walking in grass or dirt, it has been scientifically proven that there's something behind that when you're connecting with nature itself, like when you are rubber, it actually kind of energetically blocks some of that. So take off your shoes, walk in nature, get grounded in nature. And if you don't want to take off your shoes, just be outside in nature, breathe the air, hug a tree, see the beauty that is in the greenness in the trees and the leaves, the the birds that are chirping around you, the squirrels that are squirreling around you. I don't know if that's a word, but we're going to go with that. But get out, get outside. There's something about it. Get outside. It's so important. Another mood booster that I love is have a call crew. Um, And a call crew is people I call when I need to be, have my mood boosted. I have, I'm so fortunate to have some amazing girlfriends, but on top of that, I have some ride or die cousins who I can just call and know that they're going to boost me up. Yesterday was a perfect example. I was talking to my cousin who we are on the same path. It's so weird how we like, I'm like, oh my God, I'm doing this thing. He's like, oh my God, I am too. Like, I'm about to, you know, do events. Oh, I do. I'm about to do events too. I'm a, you know, I'm, you know, going back to school. I'm going back to school too. Like we have this very common lifestyle. But when I talk to her, I, we laugh. We laugh so hard about the silliest, silliest, silliest thing. Like last night I called her to be like, oh my God, I feel like I just lost my black card. I'm in this car right into the store and all of a sudden pour some sugar came on and then next it was Duran Duran. Clearly I was listening to an 80s channel. I love the 80s and I'm like, oh my God, I love this song. It just boosted my mood. But more importantly, 
calling her to say that it boosted my mood boosted me because she was like, yes, you know, you like diverse music, rock on sis. And, you know, it was just having people in your life who you can call who just make you smile and in a short period of time, and it could be a short conversation will help boost your mood and your self-care. And again, it could be something you could do in five minutes and you're on with your day. Uh, something that someone told me about was having a brag list. And I got this actually from Patrice Washington of Redefining Wealth. She is amazing. If you don't follow her, make sure you're following her. But Patrice Washington talks about having a brag list and creating a list of all the amazing things that you've done in your life. And like, make sure you're taking time to create this, whether and in, even better, put it on paper, put it in a book, have like, like, make it a scrapbook of all the amazing things you have done in life. Like, you know, I used to, I am totally known for like forgetting things I've done. And like, I was in a meeting with one of my business coaches one time and we were talking about something like we're talking about like things we've done in the past. And I'm like, and I just casually mentioned like, oh yeah, you know, I've worked with, you know, the president, you know, and the vice president and like president of what? I'm like of the United States. He's like, you never mentioned that we've known each other for years and you've never mentioned that. And I'm like, yeah, cause I don't, think about it. I'm like, oh, that's just was part of my job. And that's what I did. I did events and I worked with them and other people. And, you know, and now that's on my brag list. And it's, an, it's something that I'm working on as well of saying that it's okay to brag, but like the things that you've done in life, being able to look at your accomplishments, small or big, but Let's me backtrack those words right now. There are no small accomplishments. There are no small wins. Wins are wins. So all of your wins, no matter how big or small you are perceiving them to be, they are wins. They are things to brag about. And when you have a brag list, when you're having a day when you're like, oh, I just, I'm just, I'm, I feel overwhelmed. I feel busy. I feel stressed out. There's just so much going on in my life that I can't get off this hamster wheel. Look at that brag list. Or when you feel like, oh my God, I can't do this. I like, I like you start getting into those victim modes of life is hard. It's never going to be good. I'm always meant to struggle. I'm always meant to be the one who doesn't succeed. Pull out that brag list and remind yourself that sis, you have done some amazing ass ish. You are amazing. You have done so much in your life to get to this point. And looking at that list and boosting your mood is a great way to pour into yourself and add self-care to your your lifestyle in such a short time. Because how long does it take you to read a list? I mean, your list even may be long. It may be a couple pages. It may be 20, 30, 40, 50 pages, but it still shouldn't take you more than 10 minutes or less to get through it. So again, it's a quick way to boost your mood. Another boost way to boost your mood is exercise. Um... Even if you're not a big exercise person, think about dancing as a form of exercise. A way that I love to, I'll, I am notoriously known for dance breaks. When I'm like busy, I can't, I'm not getting like my creative juices going. I'm mad. I'm stressed out. I will stop and it will be a Beyonce. It might be the layabouts. It could be absolutely, it can be Celia Cruz. Oh my God, Celia Cruz gives me life. Um, It could be so many different songs or music, but I will just start dancing. I'll get a shoulder shimmy. I will drop it like it's hot in a moment. But dancing is a great way to boost your mood and, you know, which helps with your self-care. And if it's not dancing, yoga, you know, we talked about walking, you know, do a hit class. There's so many things you could pull up on YouTube that are short exercise programs that can shift how you're feeling and shift your mood from, you know, one of woe is me or I'm stressed or I can't do this to, or I'm stuck to, okay, I got this. I have energy. Okay. I'm ready to take on the world. I, you know, we're we're moving, we're shaking. And clearly right now you can't see me, which thank God. Um, I'm like here, like dancing it out, just talking to y'all. Cause like, again, the thought of dancing and moving and exercising shifts my mood and it puts me in a great place. Speaking of great places. So we talked about having a mood booster list and gave you guys some great, some ideals for that one. Another way to, you know, busy women of color 
can add self-care to their lives is masturbation. Yep, I said it. Masturbation. Masturbation. I'm saying it one more time in case it's a word that you're like, oh my God, how does she say that? I'm like, yep, a girl said masturbation. Let's be real. Masturbation relieves stress. And it, you know, it helps you sleep better. It burns calories. And it's great because you know your body. And if you don't know your body, it's a great way to learn your body. So you know exactly how to give yourself pleasure. And in giving yourself pleasure, there's these endorphins once you have the orgasm that come out and, you know, you start feeling better. I don't know about you. I don't feel angry after I've had an orgasm. And if you do feel angry after you have an orgasm, let me know, because I'm really interested in knowing about this. I don't know why, but I'm like, now I may have to Google that up. But I have never felt angry after an orgasm. So being able to masturbate, it will help you relieve stress. It has been known to relieve stress. Um, And you just, it's just, and it burns calories. So, you know, so think of it as a win-win, you know, you're relieving stress and you're burning calories for that summer body and winning. (laughs) Uh, Okay. On back to the list. The other one on the list is learning how to say no. No is a full sentence. Learning how to say no and add boundaries to your life is a game changer. Because oftentimes we are people pleasers and in people pleasers, we feel like we're meant to be there for everyone else but ourselves. And we say yes when we really want to say no. And then we're resentful when we say yes. Have you ever been those times when you're someone's asking you to like, I don't, I don't know, let's think of a subject. Someone's asking you to go to an event that you really don't want to go to because you really want to be pouring into yourself. You really know that this is a time where you just need to be sitting down and chilling because you've had a long week, but you say yes, because you're a people pleaser and you're resentful. You're like, "Mm, I'm at this event and I'm hella mad because I really don't want to be here. I really want to take care of myself, but I feel guilty. So when we allow ourselves permission to say no, we take control of our lives. We take control of our joy and we allow ourselves time to say no. I'm going to put myself first and take care of me or I'm, and you don't have to say why you're saying no, no is no. You don't say, oh, I'm saying no because da, 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 da. No one needs an explanation. You know, there's plenty of different ways to say no in a way that is loving and kind, but it's just starting out with saying no. So if saying no is difficult for you, I encourage you to do some mirror work. Get in the mirror and say no and see how it feels. See how it shows up in your body. See how does your body react? Does your face react? Do you feel triggered? Do you feel something in your chest? Like, does your chest feel tight? Say no and no and no again until it starts feeling a little bit more comfortable. And try this a couple of times. You know, you might have to do this a couple of times in a week, in a month. You know, it might be a daily thing you do every day until it starts feeling comfortable. But saying no is a, is a changer. It can add so much to your self-care and it's, it's saying no takes seconds. So again, if you're busy and it's a great way to, you know, protect your time, protect your energy by saying no. Um, oh yeah. Asking for help. I know I said it asking for help. A lot of us who, again, are people pleasers and strong women think, oh my God, I'm going to be weak if I ask for help. No, asking for help, it shows how strong you are. Recognizing and being aware and acknowledging that I can't do it all is such a form of strength. And when you ask for help, when you delegate some of the tasks, it gives you, again, more time for you to pour into you and you take care of you and it gives you the space to breathe. And a lot of this time of, you know, especially right now, we just need time to breathe. We need time to process. We need time for joy. We need time to laugh. But if you aren't willing to delegate and ask for help, then yeah, you're going to stay busy. You're going to stay on that hamster wheel and you're going to keep saying, oh, well, no, I don't have time. I don't have time. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. Look at me. I'm busy. Superwoman cape 
flying strong, I'm busy. No, ask for the help that you need. And it is okay to ask for that help. Um, And then my last of them all for this week is do not a dang thing. Yep, do not a dang thing. One of the best ways to pour into yourself and add self-care into your life when you're a busy woman is to take time to do nothing. Sit in a room and be still. Travel. I love travel, self-care travel. And so much to, again, I wrote a book called, you know, Travel is My Therapy. And it's where I take these certain types of trips that are what I, you know, my version of eat, pray, love. There are my self-care trips. Like I just took one recently for my birthday to an Airbnb in some farm on a farm, like a modern day farm that wasn't far away, um, but it was perfect for me. It was far enough away from the noise of everyone else. It was quaint enough where I could meditate. I can sing. I can dance. I sing when I'm by myself. It was a time for me to just breathe. And, you know, when we're not in, you know, these COVID times, usually I'm going a little bit further. I've been known to take self-care trips to Bali. Like I, you know, went off the grid last year and just said, I'm out, turned off my phone, stopped answering to emails and just went off the grid and detoxed myself. Not like real deep talks because I'm not addicted to anything. Um, but like detox myself from social media, from the noise, from the world and allowed myself time just to be in Bali. And that's, oh my God, one day we're going to talk about the Bali trip because that for me just changed everything in my life, my life. But you have to allow yourself those times to do not a dang thing. And that's why I literally did. I went to this sedum in Bali, like this small, small village where there is nothing to do. And I sat there. And I did absolutely nothing in this beautiful uh, villa that was just so gorgeous. And it was actually a great price. So doing nothing, you know, be still in a room, travel. Meditation is a great way to slow the mind and to just be still. And, you know, if meditation seems hard to you, think about doing a guided meditation. I love the 10% um, app because there's so many different types of meditation and so many different, so it gives you topics. So it's like, okay, I want a meditation on being happy. I want a meditation on compassion. I want a meditation on dealing with these, you know, police brutality issues that are going on. And I just, they're stressing me out. Guided meditation is a way to, if you aren't really good at meditating yourself, of having someone help you through it. And, you know, you can listen to men, you can listen to women, you know, find what resonates with you, try different things, try different people, try different topics. And it's a great way to ease your way into meditation. Another thing to consider is breath work, just breathing. And I'm talking about this, let's, let's just start with basic breathing. When you are busy, overwhelmed, and this, the world seems like it's closing in and you can't breathe. A great way to take care of yourself is to just do that. Breathe, you know, taking, you know, seven breaths in, holding it for three or four, and then exhaling it for seven breaths or longer. And just doing that several times, you know, that can make a difference. Breathing, just simple breathing techniques will slow down your mind will slow down your nervous system and will just, again, put you in a different mindset and allow you to be like, okay, I got this. There's just something about breath work. And again, I say this again, but like, I definitely want to do a whole new, a whole episode on breath work because it's such a beautiful and easy way. You can be anywhere in the world. You could be in the grocery store. You could be in a meeting and it can, adding just a couple of breathing techniques can shift how you show up and it could shift your mood. And it, it's a beautiful, beautiful way of adding self-care into your life if you're a busy woman of color. So those are the things for this week. Again, I have hella more, but you know, I want to, I wanted to give us time to kind of decrease into some of these. So let's recap the list. The first one was shifting your priority list and bumping yourself up on that list. 
Number two was start with basics, sleep, water, healthy eating. Number three was scheduling an appointment with yourself and making that appointment a priority as if you were meeting with a VIP because you are that VIP and it is non-negotiable. Number four is creating a mood booster list. So whether it's a playlist, getting out in nature, um, calling friends, you know, bragging list, you know, exercising. It's creating a list of things that you can do in 10 minutes or less to shift your mood. Number five was masturbation. Um, I don't think that needs explanation. It's 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 a winner. <laughs> Number six is learning to say no and saying no is okay. Number seven is asking for help. And then number eight is do not a dang thing. Not a dang thing. So, all right. So that was this week's episode. I, again, I, you know, to learn more or get more takeaways, make sure that you're following us um, and signed up on our Hello Well with Danielle uh, newsletter. So you get more updates and you get stronger, deep, deeper takeaways and also show the show notes. If you go to the Hello Well with Danielle website and get show notes and get more information, you'll get links and stuff like that. Uh, and that's all I got for you today. Um, again, thanks for joining. I know we are in a rough time. We are in uncertain times between the pandemic and we can't travel the way we want to travel. If travel is your form of self-care, we're having rulings like the Brianna Taylor, where it just seems like, yo, it, it doesn't make sense that they could not see that she was murdered and these people get off. And then you have good old number 45 doing whatever he's doing. And then, you know, rest in peace, Ruth, RBG, um, just, we lost a good one. And, you know, it's upsetting to know that, you know, 45 may replace her with someone who is not worthy of that seat when it compares to her. But if we take the time, just small amounts of time in this crazy world that we live to add in and pour into us, it will make a difference not only in our lives, but in lives that people we help, the people that we are pouring into. When you pour into you, you help pour into others. So that's our episode for today. And I will see you guys next Sunday. Other than that, take care and Take care of you because you matter. You are worthy. You deserve it. And I love you, sis. Talk to you later. Ciao. Thanks for joining us this week on the Hello Well with Danielle show. Make sure to visit our website, hellowellwithdanielle.com, where you can subscribe to our show on iTunes, Spotify, and Amazon Music and never miss an episode. Also, you can follow us on social media at Hello Well with Danielle on Facebook and Instagram and Hello Well Danny on Twitter. And if you like Hello 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 Love the show and got some good nuggets out of it, know that I'm not too proud to ask for you to please leave a rating or review on iTunes so that we can continue to expand our reach and help other women of color. Again, thanks so much for listening and I hope to see you next week. Ciao.